Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for, um, for being here. Uh, thank you to the big thank you to the Postman folks for allowing me the chance to, to speak today to you guys. Uh, let's get right into it. So what you're about to hear uh, today now from me is a personal account on my experiences uh, using Postman as a tool, uh, as a tester, as a software tester, and how Postman supercharges my testing efforts. Uh, a tiny bit about me. So I'm actually, I'm Portuguese as well as my wife. Um, we flew here from Barcelona. We're currently living in Spain in a town called Saragossa, which is famously known for its foot, football club uh, here, soccer, Real Saragossa. Uh, some of you might know it. Yeah, for those of you watching the live stream, everybody just raised their hands. Everyone knows that, that soccer club. Uh, I'm working with Adidas as what I call a, a coding tester, meaning that for the most part of my time, I am actively doing what I call hands-on experiential testing. And for the other half of my time, I'm coding away scripts to generate test data, or I'm coding any sort of scripts to help me deploy test environments or any of the, the sort. There's more to be said about me, but you can find most of it in my, um, in my blog and links to my social media. Uh, everything can be found over there. Uh, small disclaimer before I, I go ahead. Uh, for the sneaker heads and the hype beasts in the audience, I do have some bad news. So today the talk is a bit on a personal level. I'm not here representing Adidas, mostly because the, the specific project that I work inside Adidas is for the most part classified, not in the secret agent way if, if I get compromised, you have no link with us, not in that way, but as a safeguard for myself and for Adidas, and taking into account that the systems I help build are some of the ones that are most heavily under attack uh, by malicious users, I prefer to keep it this way, more of a personal tone. Uh, if you're still curious about Adidas, because some of you might be confused, Adidas, uh, software, digital, if you're still confused, I recommend you go watch the, uh, the talk by a colleague of mine, Fernando, and his friend, Benjamin, and they present in a clear and crisp way what it is added is from a, a digital perspective. Um, and I wouldn't do justice to, to, to present all of that uh, here today. Uh, so I'm here to talk about Postman and my experience with it, of course. But for that, I would like to talk to you a tiny bit about tools and about testing because there's a lot to be said about that before we can even go over to Postman. About tools, tools are a part of our lives as human beings ever since the beginning of, of, of mankind, so to speak. Uh, from a hammer to uh, a fighter jet, uh, they help us reach and do things that we would otherwise not be, would otherwise not be possible for us to do, uh, and to reach feats that would be, uh, a few years ago, for example, unimaginable. But one can never dissociate or separate the tool from its context. For example, in the case of a fighter jet and a fighter pilot, back there, uh, there is the cover of a, a really good book about a, a really famous fighter pilot. Uh, you can never separate the tool from the, the, the user of the tool in terms of context. It takes an incredible fighter pilot uh, to push the limits, for example, what a fighter plane can do. And it's the same for any tool that us software testers use. Uh, in, in order to help us check and test software. And likewise, on the testing side, you cannot think about um, testing tools without thinking about the tester's context. So nowadays, uh, we live in, in, a, in, a, in an environment where you go to any software company or any company that's doing software, and you'll find that the environment is pretty hardcore, where you have to deliver something in a short amount of time, say half a year or something, a full-fledged uh, MVP, so to speak, a uh, really complex one. The, the, um, you have a lot to lose if there is really killer bugs or vulnerabilities in that software. Um, and when you're a tester, you have to start testing now, even if it's what you have to test um, is, for example, a set of uh, complex APIs, or maybe the APIs are not complex, but the events that they trigger when you are interact with them are complex uh, by nature. And you have to start testing now. Notice that I'm saying testing now. And what do you do as a tester? Uh, one might wonder, how can a tester proceed, right? Uh, if your answer is right out of your head, oh, I'm going to specify a lot of test cases, and then I'm going to automate them, you might come up 
come up against uh, the harsh reality that that particular mindset, for example, does not adapt to a very hardcore context where you need, for example, to be constantly and very quickly adapting to, to all the changes, to all the discovery that the developers are making, you need to rely heavily on this sort of experiential uh, testing where you're doing a lot of experiments, you're learning a lot while you are testing. And you rely on your notes and on questions and on meaningful bug reports. Your bug reports, um, they might not follow always the same schema, the same format, but the information that the developer needs in order to fix that bug needs to be there in a clear and a, cri in a crisp and concise way. Automated checks, you cannot waste all of your time, for example, maintaining this big code base of, of tests that you're doing against an API. You need to keep it as lightweight as possible. And so you're always put up against this constant trade of, of uh, how can I best spend my time as a tester doing investigation, doing learning about what I'm testing? Um, and if you go over to the communities of rapid testing or context-driven testing, typically they, they have this distinct distinction of what you can say that you can automate checking, but testing, being a humane process of learning and discovery, you cannot automate. You can automate simple uh, expectations in, in, in any case via what we usually call unit tests, integration tests, uh, contract tests, for example, in those communities we typically call them checks because we're checking something um, algorithmically, whereas if it's true against an expectation that you set. But when you test, when you are in the process of testing, you most often, more often than not, you are in the process of learning about something. And for having taking this into account that you're constantly learning, you're constantly investigating something, more often than not, you'll find yourself doing detective work, so to speak. And th for the most part, 80% of what is detective work, you can ask the fictional characters of Miss Marple or Poirot or any famous uh, fictional or real detective, for the most part, the, the, um, the bulk of the work is in your head, is 80% thinking, deducing stuff, investigating anyone. Now, 20%, you leave it for the tools. And th if the tools allow you to do good work, then they suit you. If they don't allow you to do good work, they don't suit you, you leave them. Uh, and with Postman, for instance, I found it to be one of these tools that um, allows me to push the, the limits of what I can do, for example, on a daily basis. Uh, nowadays, you have a lot of um, tools salesmen, so to speak, trying to sell you tools, for example, uh, for testers. Uh, but for Postman, on the other hand, uh, I find it to be very, very useful for me as a tester, even though they are not trying to shove uh, things at me, so to speak. Um, and it helps me to do all that, which I mentioned previously about being reactive to that harsh, hardcore environment, allowing me to do continuous experiments and uh, supercharging my testing efforts. How, you may ask. Um, let's say that I'm uh, the owner of the next dinosaur park. Um, who here is a Jurassic Park fan? Hands raised. All right, so we are amongst a lot of intellectuals in the audience. Um, so let's say that you have a, such a challenge as to creating something as a dinosaur park or whatnot, and you have to test the APIs that uh, you're up against to, in order to build that. You need the power, if you want to deliver something fast, you need the power to experiment likewise very quickly. And with Postman, for example, it just allows me to quickly spin up uh, the environment I want to test, point to that environment and do uh, sort of small experiments that come to my mind. I'm not focusing, for example, on the code that I need to maintain to do those automated checks. I'm more focused on the experiments that I'm trying to do against the API, whereas it can, I can quickly check if something is wrong with the response body or the headers or anything. But for the most part, I'm just focused on the tests that I want to do. Uh, and you can go a step further, for example, with Postman, we already see in Va Valentine's talk and in other talks that, uh, and yesterday also in the workshops, that you can carry data around from request to request that you're making while you are testing. And with Postman, I ha also have this ability. While I'm trying to quickly experiment with something, uh, if it's in a complex environment, I can just walk through, do several walkthroughs through the API, mimicking sort of uh, um, 
complex scenarios that otherwise would take me a lot of time to implement if I was coding them in the typical approach of doing like uh, some Gherkin file and then coding away something in, in Java. I'm just focused on the tests and not on maintaining that code. Um, and you can experiment some more. It doesn't stop there. You can compose single simple, very simple experiments into more complex ones. Uh, and speed, in this sense, is what I like the most because I can, I can quickly uh, start thinking, okay, I'm, my mind is free to think of the business flow. When, when, I'm go when I go to bed and sleep, I'm not thinking about the code I have to maintain. I'm thinking about the experiments I'm going to do uh, the following day. And the, this always holds true where you're testing against a mock, a local environment, or a production environment, or whatever. Um, and then th the part that's my favorite, you're even going in this sense of doing experiments, you can do even more evil experiments. For example, a few weeks ago, uh, one thing that I like to do on my free time, which might sound like a weird hobby, is just uh, grabbing a, an app or something and trying to sniff the API of that app. For example, a few weeks ago, I found out that um, a food service in Spain is compromised. Their API doesn't have a lot of security. So uh, it was really a big vulnerability. While I was investigating that, I was mapping whatever I was finding from the API. I was mapping it to a Postman collection, which allowed me, when the time came to report that vulnerability to the people that were affected, I could just send them, look, this is the problems that you have on your API, and here's a Postman collection to help you re reproduce those problems. And you can go even down the rabbit hole, and let's say you found a, a vote, um, a worldwide vote for the best tester of 2019. And you decide that you, you look at their API and you see that the API is unprotected, so you decide that you want to vote for Captain Price of Call of Duty as the best tester of 2019. And you can do that with Postman, for example, you can define the Postman collection and make it run as part of a, of a script and run hundreds of thousands of iterations until someone uh, sends you a DM on Twitter asking you, please stop voting for Captain Price as the best tester uh, in the world. Um, do, don't do that. This is really going to the, dark, to the dark side of the force, so to speak, so it's better not to go down this road. I would not recommend it. Uh, but there's more. Uh, there's actually way more. Uh, I just mentioned Newman, which allows you to run stuff as, um, on your console, Postman collections that you define on the console. Nothing stops you from, for example, uh, a developer makes a pull request to the API that you're testing against. And it triggers a, a, con a continuous integration job, it deploys a build, and you can spin up a pod, uh, or whatever, you can spin up a container with your collection, say, for example, a collection of a lot of sanity checks that you want to make on every new deployment that you do for, the, for your API that you're testing. And you can do this, and at the end, it will run the Postman collection that you define. If this is clear for everyone on your team, and you can spit up a, not a notification on your typical uh, messaging service. It can be Slack, uh, Discord, Telegram, whatever, linking to the CI job that failed and why, why it failed. For example, we usually use uh, wrestling characters and, <laughs> and to warn us about, hey, something has failed. <laughs> um, and also, with Postman, you have this, what, what I like to call duct tape engineering. You have this freedom, because the tool is so um, malleable in what it allows you to do, you have this freedom to, for example, uh, you define a collection that um, will test the specific sanity flow on your API, right? And let's say that you wanted to, to give the, your developers the chance to, from their own machines, uh, test against their local instance of the API that's running, or test against some other environment. You can perfectly define, say, a, a typical Node.js project, put in, into there the uh, Postman collections, and then set up a, a bunch of scripts that the developers can just do npm run uh, test local. Or if, you're, um, if you have a fuss about it, you can, instead of using npm, you can use yarn. It's up to you. But you can define. Uh, run profiles, which the developers, they don't need to worry about what's in the Postman collection right at, the, at that instance, but they quickly have the, the chance to, okay, I'm going to run a few sanity checks without even having the need to open Postman um, from my own machine. And you can go even a step further in the duct tape engineering, so to speak. Imagine that someone comes up to you and tells you, uh, I would like you to do a, a small load test of uh, 50K visitors to our dinosaur park, 
right? And what do you do? Uh, at that point in time, you don't have any load tool prepared. You don't have anything prepared. But you have the Postman collection that, for example, allows you to uh, create uh, a single visitor to your dinosaur park. What you can do then is, for example, make it run as in, in the, your, your console with Newman, set it up to run to f um, a, a given number of iterations, so it will constantly be creating visitors, and then put this running in, se in separate processes on, 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 the, on the console. You have this flexibility to quickly, for example, pump data into, uh, into your API. Or if you want to be more professional about it and you don't, you don't want a duct tape approach, and you want to have a proper approach. For example, one of the things that I recently tried and, and it has paid off is you can use a proper load tool that, like, for example, K6 and just pour it over your collections that you already have been working daily, pour them over to your, uh, to your load tool to, to create a uh, load script, for example, with that open source library Postman 2K6. And what it allows you to do is Basically, you already have out of the box the load script, for example, that, uh, of the load flows that you want to run when you're doing load tests. You already have that set up out of the box. And then the only thing that you need to worry about is how are you going to set up your um, load generators, for example. A typical example that uh, I've, I've been using is um, you have a Kubernetes cluster, and you spin up the, uh, the load generators with that script that was generated from Postman, for example, and you can just quickly be running load tests just like that. <laughs> uh, sorry? Uh, if you don't forget about it, uh, you can ask me at the end. <laughs> uh, and um, now we go to the, the, to the worst part. Who here has saw the Chernobyl series? So it, it, Chernobyl series is a really interesting series because after uh, me and my colleagues started watching it, uh, we started using these terms interchangeably between us. It, it can't explode, not great, not terrible, 3.6. Um, and we even use the, uh, press the uh, AZ5 key whenever we want to cut the load tests because they're killing the cluster, and we don't want the uh, infrastructure people to find out. Um, and, of course, I, I would be paying you all a disservice if I told you that, uh, yeah, Postman is perfect, Postman works every time. Of course, every software has its... Uh, its limitations. For example, in terms of setup, I've been using Postman uh, from uh, consistently in the hardcore uh, basis uh, since version 6.4.2. I'm one of the few people that I know of my circle of friends that uses Postman Canary, for example, and I've restricted myself to only using the, the free sort of open source that Postman uh, gives to you. And of course, uh, at the end of the day, of course, you'll jump into, when you're hardcore using the tool, you'll jump into limitations. If you are like me and you have 100, 200 tabs open on Postman, and you have dozens of collections with hundreds of environment variables uh, and, and uh, requests and whatnot, of course, you'll, you'll jump up to an, a few limitations. But I can tell you this. Ever since I've started using Postman uh, in a more hardcore way, all of these limitations that I list here, for example, uh, just being able to reach out to the Postman community, all of them are being, throughout time, they have been improving them and minimizing them. And it's great to actually see that the tool maker of the tool that you're using is paying attention and is improving things over time. And about community, I can tell you one thing. Uh, from a personal uh, perspective, I can tell you that folks at Postman care. Why do I say this? I'm a free user. I, I don't pay for, 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 for using Postman. And every time I raise a bug on, on, on GitHub, of course, I'm a tester, I will find bugs, uh, <laughs> even on the tools I use. Uh, every time that I raise something on Twitter, on GitHub to them, and I report a bug, and, and always, there's always someone friendly from Postman uh, ready to, to reply to me, even at times faster than uh, typically when you report a bug on an open source project. And having this ability to reach out to folks at Postman uh, to write a blog post about them, and having the CEO of Postman or people who work with Postman to reach out to you and to tell you, hey, we're listening, we're taking care of it. For me, it's just uh, incredibly useful, and it really supercharges my testing. Um, a lot more could have been said, but let's leave it for some other time, and thank you all. Um, you